So today's lesson will be on functions and relations. Uh, it makes perfect sense to start off with this lesson because the name of this course is functions. Uh, now between the two words, function and relation, the one that you are more familiar with is relation because we learn about uh, linear relations in grade nine and quadratic relations in grade 10. Um, so the definition of relation, relation is an identified pattern between two variables. And there are lots of ways to represent this pattern. Okay, you can use a uh, table, using equation, using a graph, using words. And in fact, if you put those four together, that was one of the lessons, one of the big ideas from grade nine, which is the rule of four. And even though we're not going to be studying linear relations as much, uh, every time we uh, talk about a new function in this course, and we're going to go over quite a few, every time we learn a new function, we ba we're basically playing with the rule of four again. We're going to try to represent these functions using a graph, using a table, using an equation, and using words. Okay, so what about a function? Okay, we know what a relation is, but what about a function? A function is actually a special type of relation. Okay, and what makes it so special? Each value of the independent variable corresponds to exactly one value of the dependent variable. Okay, so what, each value of the independent variable corresponds to exactly one value of the dependent variable. And if you think about that, uh, that means that all functions are relations. Okay, it's just, it's just a pattern. Okay, but not all relations are functions. And in fact, you learned about a relation in grade 10, which is not a function. We'll get to that. Okay, so let's let's look at some different representations, okay, of a relation, whether it be a table or a graph or an equation. And then we're going to answer the question, is this relation a function? So let's take a look here. So we have a table here uh, where the two variables, uh, time worked and amount earned. So time worked is our independent variable and our dependent variable is amount earned. So you can also think of it as x and y. Does each value of x give us one value of y? If that's the case, then we have um, we have a function. Our relation is a function. So let's see, 20, 18, 26, 22, 30. So you have different, all your independent variables or values of your independent variable are different. So in fact, of course, uh, this is gonna fit the definition of a function each value of x will give me a different value of y, okay? Or give me exactly one value uh, uh, for, for the dependent variable. So the answer is yes. And that means the table value represents a function. Okay, so this relation is specifically uh, a function. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, we have another table here. Ooh, so once again, uh, height is your independent variable. Arm length is the dependent variable. Now this time, let's, add, let's ask the same question to see whether it's a function. Does each value of the independent variable correspond to exactly one value of the dependent variable? Does each x only give us one value of y? And if you look closely, the answer is no because you have two individuals with a height of 150 centimeters, but they give us different values uh, for the dependent variable. So one is 34 centimeters for arm length and another is 43 centimeters. So the answer to this question here is no, which means a table of value represents a relation. Okay, this relation is not a function. Okay. So if you give a t if you're if you're given a table, then you really just have to look at the values of the independent variable and just see if the definition checks out. Does each value of the independent variable correspond to exactly one value of the dependent variable? Okay, let's see. All right. Now, what if we don't give you a table? What if we give you a graph instead? So let's work with uh, two graphs here. So we have uh, y equals x squared and x equals y squared. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to graph them on, on the same uh, plane. 
uh, or same grid and see if you uh, can tell whether you have a function or not just by looking at the graph okay because like I said we're not always going to be given the table all right let's do the t um, table of values for y equals x squared so uh, hopefully you remember this from grade 10 okay this is our basic parabola y equals x squared okay what about x equals y squared well if this is if negative 1 is y so y squared is x so negative 1 all squared is going to be 1 0 squared 1 squared 2 squared 3 squared okay so let's uh let's do the two graphs here how about we do uh, different colors here? We'll do one for green and one for red. All right, so let's get our scale. Let's go one, one. So let's say y equals x squared is, uh, is green. Beautiful. Hmm. Okay, so now let's try x equals y squared. Let's plot those points. So 1, negative 1, 1, 1, and then 4, 2, 4, negative 2. interesting okay so from the table from the table i'm hoping you can say that x equals or y equals x squared will give you a function okay if you study the table of y equals x squared i'm hoping you can see that um, you, each value of the independent variable corresponds to exactly one value of the dependent variable each x only gives you one value of y now if you study x equals y squared, ooh, like one can give you a y value of negative one. So when x is one, it gives you a y value of negative one or one. So immediately you can tell that uh, from the table of x equals y squared, you do not have a function. So using the table of values above, you can deduce that y equals x squared is a function and x equals y squared is a relation. Okay, it's not a function. So how can you deduce this? Uh, how can you deduce which is a function using the graph? So there's actually a way just by looking at the graph without looking at the table. Okay, so I'm gonna let you fill, uh, you know, write down what you believe, but what you probably came up with is called the vertical line test. A vertical line test a vertical line test is a method of determining whether a relation is a function when you're given the graph okay so you're basically using your imagination and drawing an infinite number of vertical lines and see if they only intersect at one point on the graph okay if it if it always intersects at one point then your relation is a function and how do you fail the vertical line test if you draw a vertical line and it crosses through two points on your graph okay so for example let's take a look at this uh, uh, graph of x equals y squared if i draw a vertical line right here you see how it passes through two points and being a function is very strict you don't need to fail the vertical line test many times you just need to fail once and you cannot be a function okay so let's take a look here So look at the graph of each relation, determine whether uh, it is a function um, by using the vertical line test. So let, let's look at the graph here of x equals y squared plus one. Does that, does the graph of this relation pass the vertical line test? And the answer is no, it fails the vertical line test, okay? Remember, you only need to fail once. You don't need to fail 10 million times. You fail once and you can't be a function. It's very hard to be a function. Okay, so function using, uh, so the answer here no, not a function, okay? What about this one? Is this one passing a vertical line test? Okay, this is not a graph that you're familiar with, 
But you know what? If you take a look at this, and there's some special special features about this graph. There's some, some things called asymptotes here, which we'll talk about later. Uh, but this graph, it does pass a vertical line test. You know, it looks like it looks like a funny graph, but it does pass a vertical line test. So the answer is yes, it is a function. So if I give you a table, you really just inspect the, the values of X and Y. If I give you a graph, you check for the vertical line test. Now, what if, what if uh, I'm given an equation? So one way to go about this, okay, it might not always work, but if you're given an equation, uh, you, what you can do is isolate for your dependent variable, okay? Isolate for y in this case. So I'll show you why I'm doing that. So this, by the way, this one, you, you should already know that this is a function. This relation is definitely a function because this is linear, right? And uh, if you're drawing a line in your head, I'm hoping you can see if it's not a vertical line, which this isn't, you're going to get a function. Okay, so... Let's rearrange. All right. So from the equation, without even do, without even picturing the graph. Now you can picture the graph, but really try to study the equation. Okay. You have uh, you sub in a value of x. What how, what do you do? You multiply by three over two, and then you take that product and add by three. So every time you sub in a value of x. I'm hoping your imagination says to you that you're only going to get one value for y. You can't possibly get two values for y when you multiply by 3 over 2 and then add by 3. Right? It's just you're going to get one value for y for every value of x based on what the equation says. Okay? Now what about here? What about x squared plus y squared plus 36? Now once again, you should be able to, you know, graph this in your head, but just in case you forgot what you learned from grade 10, I don't want to spoil it, but we're going to isolate for the dependent variable again. Oh, so this time, if you sub in a value of x, you know what, the equation is saying you can potentially get two values for y. Okay, you can sub in, I don't know, sub in a value of, of zero for x, you're gonna get plus or minus six for y. So because you can get two potential values for, uh, for y for one value of x, this is not, uh, not a function. Okay, so let's write it down before I forget, determine whether the relation is so. Uh, yes, it is a function. No, it is not a function. Okay, now be careful. This strategy might not always work. There are some, sometimes you can't isolate for the, the dependent variable, but you know what, for the, the level what, that we are working at, uh, I would argue that most of the times you can. By the way, this is a circle centered at the origin with the radius of six because it's x squared plus y squared equals six squared. So yeah, um, that's what you learn in grade 10. And in fact, that's one of the, the relations which you learn that is not a function um, because you really studied you know, three things over two years. You studied lines, parabolas, and circles. Anyways, so uh, regardless of which representation you're given, whether it's a table, a graph, um, or an equation, you should be able to identify whether um, the relation is a function. Perfect, so that's our first lesson of the course.